Jesus. Do better for Jesus. Do better for Jesus. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. If you don't shout hallelujah, it means you don't want to go to 2019. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout it. Amen. Amen. Uh, snap to Ingles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't speak English. Prima. Hey, it's Mark like talk. We are going to listen to the word of God. And I want all of you to take your Bibles. If I'm not mistaken, everybody has a Bible today. Your pens, notebooks, and take notes. Amen. I see someone talking again and again and again. God to help me preach today, sir. Wanna help me preach? Okay, then I want you to be quiet. Amen. Let's pray for a short. Father, we thank you this morning that you have paved a way for us to listen to your word today again. We are grateful to you, the Lord, every day when we come to your presence, you speak unto us. You give us nothing more than your word because in the beginning was your word, and the word was with God, and the word with God. It's the same word that contains life, and the life is our light. We thank you that today you're going to give us your word again. One thing that we ask of you, the Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Give us a retentive heart, a receptive heart, and a retentive memory that we can receive your word in your heart, in our hearts, and then we can also remember it and do according as we've said, so that our life shall be magnified in your glory. We thank you. Lord, my God, I pray, I bring myself, Lord, before you. Put me aside and let your word that is coming penetrate through my tongue to your people. Not what I know, not what I want, but as you have already ordained. I thank you, Lord, for listening to my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 We are going to speak on the subject, I will build my church. This is the theme for next year. So I'm going to give a short introduction of what we are going to be going through the whole of next year. And the theme is, I will build my church. I will build my church. I don't want to preach on that, but I want to teach and explain some few things. And this is part one. Maybe next week, the minister will come in part two, or I myself will continue, because the theme is very deep and wide. And everyone of us, we have something hidden in it. Jesus is the one who is speaking and saying, I will build my church. So the church is not mine. It's not for Dr. Pastor Nyaku. It's not for our national head. And also, it's not for the presiding elder. The church is for who? God. It's for who? God. All right. And the theme is taken from Mark chapter 16, verses 18. And Titus chapter 2, verse 15, but I'll capitalize on the first one. Be the mighty of chapter 16, verse 18. Please take your Bibles and open with me to Matthew chapter 16, verses 18. Who is there, please? No, no, you can read. Opera James, are you there? Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. I'm reading from Mighty chapter 16, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And I also say to you that you are Peter. We can't hear you. So, yeah, I'm reading from Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Uh -huh. And I also say to you that you are Peter. Uh -huh. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. And I and I say also unto thee, thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. This contest is in the middle of a passage. Before you can understand it, last time I taught you that you have to go to the pretext. Pretext means the text that precedes where you are reading. And for the full understanding, you go further to the post-text. That's the text that goes after. You remember the lesson we did the other day? Okay. So before we can get the full understanding, let's take a few verses prior to this one. So let's start from verses number um, 
16, let me see, 16, okay. Well, 15. Once upon a time, Jesus Christ was asking the disciples, who do people say I am? Others said, people say you are Elijah. People say you are uh, Isaiah. Other people say you are one of the prophets. Jesus said, okay. But what do you, 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 what do you say I am? So verse 15, 14 says, so they said, some say John the Baptist, some says Elijah, others even Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, verse 15. And he said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So before the verse 18 could be understood, the verse 16 says what Peter said. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The disciples said to him and said, blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, meaning Simon, son of Jonas. For flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. So now we understand what happened that day, right? Okay. And the second scripture is Titus chapter 2, verse 15. And I'm reading from the screen. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. You go to the last chapter very uh, at the end of the sermon. But you want to learn some few things about what Jesus said. He said, I will build my church. Now, every building has a foundation, right? Yeah. Let's take this house, uh, this building for example. It is built upon a solid foundation. Otherwise, it will sink. Okay. Now the church, let's picture the church as being a building, right? In that case, the church must also have a building, a, a foundation. Mm -hmm. And the foundation is the revelation that Paul uh, Peter said. The revelation is Christ. Because he said to Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal these things to you. That means the revelation that you have concerning me is not from your knowledge. But it's God who gave you that revelation too. He said again, and on this rock, which rock is he talking about? Did Peter mention the rock there? No. The rock he's talking about is he himself, being the Messiah, being the Christ. So Christ is the rock. Amen. Amen. Because if you are, you want to build a house, you will not go to the seashore on the sand and build your house there. You want to build your house in a solid place, right? Otherwise it will fall. So on the solid rock, that is why Christ says he will build his church. And Christ means the Messiah or the Anointed One. Let me go back a bit. When we say Christ is the rock, you know, every country has a law, right? Constitution. They write them in their books and they save them. So when you break the law and you go to court, the court or the judge or the lawyers, they will, they will pick up books and begin to make references. When you go back to the book of Exodus, when God was giving his constitution, his laws to human beings, where did he write it? On a, rock. On a rock. That was Christ. So the foundation of every nation is based on its own constitution. That's the laws. So going back to the laws, God gave us his rules, his laws, upon the rock who is Christ. That's where the church is founded today. Here's where I just read the verse 16. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, chapter 3, verse 3, uh, uh, chapter 3, verse 11 says, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ. So this one confirms that Christ is the foundation of this church. Not upon any human's philosophy. Not upon anybody who has gone to university and have a degree. No. You can learn and become a pastor or apostle or whoever you may be. But the foundation still remain who? Christ. Amen. Good. <coughs> there is only one church. We don't have churches. Nowadays we have Pentecost Church, Presby Church, uh, Roman Catholic Church, whatever church. The moment you mention that word church, people think a building. 
But the word church in the Greek means ecclesia. That means the called out ones. He called us. That's why the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. But with that he has called us, he has established us as a church, his body. So Ephesians 2 verse 20 says, And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So you can never neglect Jesus out of the church. So if you tell your parents, Man, that I'm going to the church today, you're not coming to this building, you're coming to see who? Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. As we pray this morning, <coughs> if you know who you are going to meet in the church, you better run and come. For well, he is here waiting for you. Right. Amen. Amen. Verse 21 of Ephesians 20, uh, uh, 2 says, In whom all the body, uh, sorry, in him all the building fitly framed together, grow into a holy temple of God. For instance, when Enoch sang, uh, sorry, stood here to sing, his voice echoed. When Elder was leading the praises, we were just singing and joyfully praising the Lord. When Sister was leading us in the worship, we were all into the spirit, and now it's my turn, I'm teaching. So all the body parts, we are fitly framed together. Now, if you look around you, we have pillars here. We have the platform. We have the fluby decking. We have the ram, we have the door. All of them are fitting together to make a complete building. That's how you're supposed to see it. So no matter who you are here, you are important to Christ. Because you are part and parcel of the building or the church he's building. Amen. Amen. Verse 22 said, In whom he also built together for an habitation of, a, of God through the Spirit. So all of us, we are part and parcel of the church that Christ is building. So you are going to get to next year with the notion that you are part of Christ building. Amen. 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 Now, let me take one step back and piece this so that we can go into further details. The Greek word for build is, who can pronounce it? It means to build. To build in our modern English means is to construct. Uh -huh. Construction means to put parts or materials together. So that means when Jesus said, I will build my church, I will build the ecclesia, I will build my ecclesia, he meant that I'm going to add pieces and bits and parts. To form it complete. So therefore, he needs somebody to lead. He needs a hammer. He needs a shovel. He needs building materials to make the building complete. So you and me, we are part of what Christ is going to use. Amen. Amen. Good. Now, another word for build is to construct. When people are making the uh, act in five from Breda to Amsterdam, they construct a highway. It means they are building it. It also means to erect, to erect a pillar. Mm -hmm. It means to put up. So when we all come to the church, we are all coming here to assemble the parts together. Mercedes will build the S class 350, for instance. The tire is here, the crankshaft is there, the steering wheel is there, and they assemble it together, meaning they are building it together. Mm -hmm. And also to set up. So be the we are all a set up, we are assembled, we have been erected together as a complete church. Amen. Amen. <coughs> That's not done by me, by, by who? Christ, because he is the chief cornerstone. Now, when we go to a building site, they want to build a bank or a school or a hospital, we see two things. Two things. The building tools or the construction tools and the construction materials okay let me show you some few things here the pictures you see there the top left there is the gravels the stones we have the roofing sheets cement iron rods woods <coughs> roofing tiles pipes sand everything all the things you see there, they are the building materials. Amen. Amen. Without the sand, we cannot make blocks. Without the cement and the stones, we can't make any concrete. 
after the building has completed, without the roof, you can't live in. And if you want to live in without the pipes, you can't even get water or flash, they will say, or whatever. So every day, little detail you see there, they are all necessary for the construction of the building. When we come to the church to exercise the same thing, we need Brother Jeffrey to get behind the computer to get the screen working. We need Brother Iman to clap the hands so that we can get it loud. We need Brother Amos to sing. We need um, Nana to get behind the drums. You see, so every one of us, we are part of the building <coughs> materials. Amen. But there are others who are also not just building material, but they are tools. The tools are, for example, cry wagon, the hammer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the beton molder, the thing they use in using mixing the beton, the concrete. We need the bucket to fetch the water. But the question is, and my question to you is, do you want to be a tool or the construction site, or you want to be a building material? A tool. You want to be a tool. Being a tool is good. So like after building the house, we throw away the tool, we don't need the tool anymore. Have you seen the beton model in this workplace? No. The team you see, you see the shovels here? You see them, you see the bucket here? No, you don't see them. Why? Because they did they done with their job for they done with their job. That's why some of us have become these days. They just come to help. Like, where are they now? They have gone. They are tools. When Christ comes, you not say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get, let's go to heaven because you play the organ or you play the drums. And after that, what else? <coughs> Bible says he's going to judge you by the word. And you're not even here to partake the word. What are you going to use to better your life up? I prefer to be a construction material, but not a tool. Because if the hammer, uh, the, the, the carpenter who is coming to roof, the burning comes, use the hammer, pa, 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 put the nails in the roof. When he finishes, the roof remains as part of the house. Does he put the hammer in the house? No, he takes his hammer away. The hammer becomes a tool for constructing the building. So from next year, let it be your high desire that you're going to be part of the construction material but not just as a tool. Amen. Amen. Because if you are the roofing sheet, you still maintain the house <coughs> and you will prevent water from coming in or the sun from coming in. If you are the wall or the sun that is used in making the wall, you will still be part of the, uh, the, the building. You prevent extreme weather from coming inside. You still play a part. Amen. Are you following me? Okay. Now, Somebody will say, what about, what kind of material should I be? Okay, precisely all that is a pillar of our church here. He's holding the roofing sheet. He's supporting the foundation. The door frames are fit into it. So when the pillar cracks, what happens to the roofing sheet? It will fall. So even though you are part and part of the building, you are very vital to supporting each one another. So when Christ said, I will build up my church, he means I'm going to put the components together. They are going to help each other. And when that one happens, the gate of hell will never prevail against it. Mm. Amen. Amen. So if we don't help our president as the pillar, we just leave him alone. Oh, it is his job. Let him do his job. When the winds come and the winds blow and the pillar cracks, the whole building sat in, you are part of it. And when that one happens, they are going to look for the tools again. That time, and the tools have gone. So next year, we are going to build this PRWC in a different dimension as we have been doing it years to years. If you only let this thing be at the back of your mind, that whatever you are doing, you are not doing it for yourself, but you are doing it for Christ. Amen. Let's say something out in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 12. He says, Now, if any man built upon this foundation, which is Christ, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hail, stubble, every man's work will be made manifest. 
For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You can choose to be the concrete, Nana. Eric, you can choose to be the sand. Sister Bex, you can choose to be the wood. You are part of the building. Um, Samuel can choose to be the nail. <coughs> Sister Gisela can be the carpet. You can choose to be whichever part you want to play in the building. By the time will come, God says, I'm going to use fire to test and see if this part that you say you are, you are really genuine one, but not the one made in China. <laughs> uh -huh. God, the made in China refuse it. When the sun hits about 45 degrees, they begin to melt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, it's a, uh, <laughs> but it's a roof sheet. But the one made in Germany, 100 degrees is still strong. So when that time comes, 2 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 3 verse 12 says, He's going to use fire to try and see if you are a genuine part, or a good part, or gold, or silver, or hay. Do you know what hay is? This is hay. It's a Mm -hmm. When fire comes closer to the hay, it burns up like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when fire gets to the refuge sheet, it takes long before it burns. So the Bible says, I tell you today, I should, we should tell ourselves this morning that every man's work is going to be revealed by fire. And it will be tried out to see what kind of material you are. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Christ says, I will build my church. And. Uh -huh. Gate of hell will not prevail. Mm -hmm. So now the house of fire. Mm -hmm. What can sustain this fire? Fire can mean problems, challenges, <coughs> distress, discomfort. When it comes, will you maintain the church? Mm -hmm. When it's cut, you black like under the dead bed leg. You can't even wake up 8 30 to come to church because you are shivering. That is the fire. When it comes, can you come to church? When you don't even have money for offering, you feel, if I go and I don't put offering, what will they say? Nobody cares what you give. That is your fire. When it comes, will you stay home? When your shoe is slanted, people will laugh at my shoe because I always wear one shoe. Who cares? That is your fire. That one is testing you to see how devoted you are, if you are really a gold or silver. But let me tell you one, one point. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. When the fire consumes the house, and the house is not burned down, we use the other strong materials to sustain the house. Mm -hmm. If the challenges come, and you don't fall back, people are insulting, you don't fall back, the kids are sick, you don't, don't have any way to get around, and you still maintain your dignity in the Lord and come to church, you will still put your best way forward. The Bible tells you in... First Corinthians that verse 14 that if any man's work are by which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. <laughs> so Christ is building the church, but the components will be rewarded. And verse 15 says, If any man's work shall bend, he shall suffer loss. Oh. But he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. So he's going to push you through fire. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine this building where we are in this one fire. Everybody will run away. <laughs> yes. The first thing to get uh, burnt is the carpet and then the plafond. The walls will be there. Even though the same fire, but the walls will be there. Amen. Amen. So depending on the kind of material that you use in building will give the result of what will remain behind. Look at the Oranya house. It's burned down by the boy. I think it was Jeffrey. He's still taking the stairs. They say it's made of stones. Stones don't get bent. Stones are solid materials. That's right. You can try a stone. 25 degrees, 100 degrees, the stone will be hot, but still stand. When problem comes, can you stand? <coughs> the house is bent. Look at the other picture on the right. Everything is gone. All the walls are broken. They use a China made wall cement, I think. <laughs> so it can't stand heat. The heat comes. Everything is gone. Mm -hmm. But the Orania house at the, at, the, at the right hand side, it is still strong. 
Even though the windows are shattered, it is still strong. Can you be strong when you have problems? You have to exam, so I'm not coming to church. Okay. End of the day, you pass, you PE. You have a diploma, ho ho, you can't get no job. But the guy who failed, he got a job, he don't have it. Why? He used his time for God. I know that we are students, we need time to learn. But nobody goes to school on Saturday, do you go to school on Saturdays? No. Friday says no student is here. You are being tried. Your exams is your fire. Can you leave the fire? No. The Bible says, end of the day, he's going to try you. And the one that will sustain the burn, they shall be rewarded. Amen. Christ is building up his church. Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible says, which one of you, which one of you, all of us will be tested. Which one are you? Which one are you? The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, he says that, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, <coughs> but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If you go to some people's house, you're going to enter the house, nice marble floor, the sofa, like a comfortable, you can sit in and enjoy eh? the TV, flash on the wall. When they serve you nice uh, uh, a glass to drink from it, you invite it to the dining table, the fork and a mess in your hands, pure silver. Wow. Mm. When you look at a table, pure wood, different, different materials. But when the fire is set into their house, the richness spent. But when the owner comes back to the house, mm -hmm. at least you find some few things and say, wow, mm -hmm. this thing has sustained. What kind of material do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Christ says, I will build my church. Mm -hmm. The church is me and you. The verse says that some are to honor and some to dishonor. There are some people when you when somebody visits you in the house and he asks for water, you don't use the same glass that your papa drinks from it to give the person water. Mm -hmm. Different talk, different glass. Mm -hmm. And I know if I come to Nana's house, you give me a glass to drink. But when National Head comes to your house, you don't give him the same glass you gave me. Would you? <laughs> me no. No. That's how it is. Some to honor, some to dishonor. And I know your mother will not allow you to use the cup that is meant for visitors. For you to be drinking every day, trying here. No, he won't do that. Why? It's for people of honor. That's how he is. It is like God has made most of us like that. Some to honor, some to dishonor. But the question is, which one of these two do you like to be? Amen. Mm -hmm. oh, are you here? Mm -hmm. This one is just preparing for next year. Mm -hmm. It's next year's team. We are just preparing our mind. Verse 21 of 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. If you sanctify yourself, isolate yourself from the bad habits of your friends, remain in God and His way. The Bible says it's going to make you an honor of a vessel of honor. We want somebody to go and meet the president of Ghana who is coming from uh, 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 America, but he's passing through here. We want to pick up um, somebody. Ima. This one, this one, this one, this one. Oh, don't take Ima. The Ima didn't come to last week. Don't take this guy. He doesn't he can't even dress well. They're going to look for somebody who can speak, who can dress, who is presentable. Talk? Uh -huh. That means some to honor and some to dishonor. But if you can sanctify yourself, make your head cut, shave nice, it means you are, you are removing yourself from the organ, the, no, the, the normal norms. The Bible says he can use you for something that is honorable. <coughs> and verse 22 says, Flee also youthful lust. What is the difference between running and fleeing? <laughs> Students, <laughs> difference between run and flee. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Running, I can just stand up and I'll be running. Uh -huh. But fleeing, you are, uh, there's something which is happening and you are running away from what is happening. That's fleeing. Can someone also help? To run and to flee. Okay. 
what he said is correct, but I'll chip some small thing to it. We run with two legs. But when you flee, you flee with four legs. You run more than your head, your legs can carry you. Why? Because what is chasing you, if you stop for a second, you catch him. So when you run, you can sometimes look back, but when you flee, you don't look back. He say youthful lust. Lust of the flesh. The things we see. Nowadays, the computer is in our pocket. We can visit every part of this world on our phone. The things we see, I mean, the things we desire to have, the last, the Bible says, run away 10,000 times away from it. Why? They can get you distracted. Again, but follow righteousness. Follow what? Righteousness. Follow what? Righteousness. What is righteousness? P will say, ten and eight. What is righteousness? Mm -hmm. Doing what is good. Doing what is good. What is that? Oh, okay. So doing what is good is righteousness. What, what about doing what is right? Doing what is It's not the same thing. Okay. Now, you need money. I gave you 10 euro. Yeah? And when I realized, the moment I branched off, you went to the shop and bought cigarettes and a cognac with the 10 euro I gave you. I just do a good thing. I just help you. Good. But what is the right thing for me to do then? What is the right thing? Yes. For you. You are sitting in front of the uh, 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 cafe yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you ask me for 10 euro. Mm -hmm. I gave it to you. The moment I gave it to you, you get into the bar, get a glass of cognac and a cigarette and come outside to drink and smoke. Did that do the right did that do the good thing? No, but uh, yeah, yeah. Did I do the right thing? No. Yeah, yeah, because you yourself, you have done your part. I've done my part. Yeah. Plus, I definitely know that this guy will go to the bar and booze with a the tail. There's a difference between but, good and right. But, but, Goodness will not take you to heaven. Righteousness will take you to heaven. <laughs> if I like, have money yeah, and go to the children's home and take care of the children's home, donate millions to them, you are done. A good thing, but the money you got, if it's good gain, you work your salary, you get a good gain. You didn't pay even ten percent of your tight. You did good thing to them. You have not done anything right. There's a difference between good and right. Say so your righteousness will take you to heaven, but not the good things you do. Different between the two. That's why the Bible says, pursue righteousness. Faith. Righteousness means you take God's word. Transfer it like a cloth and wear it. Mm. You don't need to tell people that you are Christian, but your lifestyle shows. The way you speak shows. So once upon a time, when Peter denied Jesus, he said, hmm, we can even see from the way you talk that you are one of his. The way you talk. Some of us, you can't talk good. Somebody will ask you, because the way you break your face and give an answer, it's like, why are you a Christian? Hmm? Again, he said, charity, love, peace, and with them that call on that call on the name of the Lord out of pure heart. So you and I, we are all brothers and sisters in Peter the Priest Turnout. We are serving one God. You don't have to be envious of me or jealous of me of what I have. Anything I have is yours. Just ask me, you get it. That's why we're supposed to live like. Hmm? Are you here? But so doing, you become a component or part of what Christ is building. So, if Christ is building his church, it takes people like me and you to build it. Not only me because I know how to speak in public or I can teach, no. But whatever that you have, whoever that you are, you are important. But today, sit in your heart and find out and see what kind of building material would I like to be. The one when the fire comes, it can stand. The one when the storms rise, it can stand. The one when the wind begins to blow, it can stand. Not the one when the wind begins to blow, oh, the roof, puff, it's gone. <coughs> now, now, when you see it's raining, people begin to put stones on top of their roofing sheet. They are afraid the wind will carry their roofing sheet away. <laughs> yes. Why? The nails are already roosted. They are all rusted. 
So what kind of building materials do you want to be used? The Bible says, fire is going to be used to try and test it. So when the building is set on fire, everything is burning, what do we think will stand? The sun will stand. The cement block will stand. The concrete floor will stand. The iron rods will stand. The stones will stand. Which one of them do you want to be? This year, we have gone through ups and downs. We run and shift. There are 52 Sundays in the whole of a year. I never missed one. Check yourself and see how many times you came. 52 Fridays in a week, I missed one. But that Friday, I was in Mecca, teaching there. How many have you missed? So it's a matter of putting on register, but a matter of commitment. <coughs> Show that you are committed to the Lord. He can use you as a vessel of honor. Amen. Amen. So the next year, when we begin, change things up. Let things be, don't be just a tool. Be part of the construction material. Be the sun, be the stone, be the water. Amen. Amen. Are you here with me? Yes, sir. One final point is this. When somebody steps into your house, what does he see? He sees the walls. He sees the roofing sheet. He sees maybe the corners, the things you have. Does the person see the foundation? Yeah. Answer me. No. Where is the foundation? It's down, down, there. down there. When you come here, do you see Christ here? Yeah. <coughs> no. no we don't see. Where is he? He's in us. He's where? In us. You see? Now, when you talk about foundation, you say the foundation is down there. Yeah. Yes, and the Bible says Christ is the foundation. Where is Christ? Down there. Say he's down there. <laughs> say he's down there. <laughs> he's down there. <laughs> he's down there. Yes. <laughs> So he needs you to come and stand on him so that the two of you can work this together. Next day, the way we do our things must change. Amen. The time we come to church must change. Thank you. We are going to draft a new system of how this is going around. Doing the things old fashioned is gone. Christ himself is going to build it. Not me or presiding man. All of us. All of us. So today, determine for yourself what are you going to be. A stone or iron rod? A nail or a wood? A hay or a stubble? What do you want to be, Emmanuel? Gisela, what do you want to be? Ramos, what do you want to be? Answer them for yourselves. So that when Christ says, I am better today, you present yourself to him that I am a quality, heavy made bedding material that is worthy for building of a church. May the Lord help us. Amen. May He equip us. Amen. May He enable us <coughs> to do what He has called us to do Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go for a short prayer. First of all, I want you to thank God that He has spoken to you. Thank God. Somebody give to thank God for speaking to you. Father, we thank you this morning that your word has come unto us. We bless your name this morning because people are searching to and fro to hear such a message. But by your grace, you are giving it to us free of charge. We didn't pay for it. The charge.